hello and welcome to another video on this YouTube channel. It has been a couple of weeks without, um, well, without myself recording anything, and of course, everything it has uh, turned, turned completely, you know, upside down. A uh, ton of vulnerabilities that it happened, um, just for VMware, for pretty much everything around. I think a couple of uh, few weeks ago, uh, some mild vulnerability happened. Well, not mild, but it was a zero day on Grafana. I did cover that, not in a video, but on the blog on jorgedelacruz.uk. You can see um, what it was all about, and you can see as well how to upgrade to the latest Grafana version. That's okay, that was fine. But then the log for GA um, came, and that vulnerability is really, really bad. So it has just the CVA score 10 out of 10. So it was the maximum that you can that you can get. And it does affect a lot of vendors out there. So I'm recording this video today, of course, talking about VMware um, in this case and how to do the workaround, um, how to fix it for now, and as well, how we can uh, detect it um, uh, as well. So this video is going to be a combination between VMware vSphere and Runcast. So if you remember, you can just find the video and just uh, probably put somewhere here around the video um, where to access the previous video about Runcast. Runcast is, a, is an amazing, amazing product, amazing tool that it helps you to uh, with the vulnerabilities like, like this one, for example, to, to get notified around those um, uh, vulnerabilities around the ESXi, VMs. Uh, they have a lot of um, uh, the database. It's, it's just is just really really big and it keeps growing and it's always up to date so not just vmware of course um you can just monitor kubernetes you can monitor as well um you can monitor as well uh the azure aws and uh, now the operating system as well that's new on the version 6.0 that that just went out uh, a few days ago so um but in this specific case i was really surprised and happy to see that Runcast now does support this uh, log4j uh, well reporting, at least you can just see if you are affected or not. So I think on this video, what I wanted to show you is how with Runcast we can detect that log4j and as well uh, the workaround, the step-by-step -step of how to fix it. At, uh, as of today, the day it's today, 17th, um, 17th of December 2021, because of course all of this it's a uh, work in progress. So they are about at the moment two different um, workarounds that you need to follow one after the other for this uh, on vCenter at least. Um, so the video it's about how to do those steps. So let's jump into the console together now. And so if we just go and start from from the runcast, we can see the console. We can see the vulnerabilities detected and, and some um, some other data here. Let's take a look into the vulnerabilities. And as you can see, I have a few of them critical ones. Um, so I'm just going to focus at the moment on the security advi uh, advisory, the Apache uh, log4j, and of course it does affect VMware vCenter server or NSX, at least Runcast detects that, and the score is 10 out of 10, once again, absolutely disgusting. This is really, really important and extremely critical. I have other vulnerabilities here that I might, I might just need to take a look into those later on. Uh, because everything that is critical, you need to take um, a look and try to try to fix it, of course. So, okay, let's expand again that uh, this one, the, the critical one, extremely important. As you can see here, it's just uh, referencing to the to the KBs and my um, well, my object affected is my my vCenter, right? So now the thing that we need to do over here. Uh, now that we know what is affected, of course, um, as I said, we do have uh, two, VMware has two different KVs for now, uh, a, a few more even, but uh, two different workarounds at least that we need to um, that we need to follow in, in order to uh, remediate this, or at least until the new version of the log4j, I think it's the version 2.16, um, until that it's released on future patches. We just have some workarounds. So there are a few Python scripts. So 
that's always good. I don't have anything around Python. If that's the, the way to go, really good. Um, that VMware um, has, you know, reply with this with this with this speed um, and over the weekend, I think. So yeah, it is really really good. Okay, so a um, couple of things that I wanted to mention. It's because it's a Python script. You can always do a V um, on inside the V Center and then copy paste over there. Or uh, you can download it to like a like a jumping machine and from there do a, 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 a an SCCP to, to the vCenter. Or I'm going to show you now <clears throat> how we can switch from the uh, from the VCCA console into normal kind of SSH cell console. Yeah, yes, you know, logging into cell. So we have one attachment here. The first attachment, let's download it. This is a Python script. And now I'm going to use just uh, so I'm going to log in into my normal uh, vCenter, um, appliance console, and then I just need to put cell.set enable true, and then inside cell, inside the cell, I just need to run this command. I'm just copy paste here. And as you can see here, this is going to um, make the console, uh, when you log in, it's just going to log in directly into the SSH, as you can see, directly into the cell itself so now i can use my normal win sscp or any other uh, you know um, ssh uh, copy and then i need to go into it can be it can go bar temp or you can just go uh, into temp directly i think i'm going to go into temp later on but let's go into my downloads and into my downloads i do have what is the file if i go by chains might be over here the msa 2021 here it is the file and now i go to temp and inside temp inside the vc, the VC center into the temp folder i'm going just to upload this um upload this file and as by the instructions on the uh okay let me go here uh the instructions following the kb it's just as simple as python and then just put the path of that python uh of that python script okay so i'm going to auto complete that's fine you can see that it's asking me do you want to proceed let's go into yes and now this is going to remediate or um, just kind of uh, alter um, and fix those uh again work around into those libraries that they are um, that they are affected with this log log 4j uh vulnerability so they have been two vulnerabilities one it was the most critical one um just to, that people could get information around pretty much anything from the different appliances on the different services and another one has been for um uh for uh, that they could trigger to the uh to uh, DDoS attacks, um, and I think that is the other workaround that I'm going to apply in a minute. But anyways, they are two for now. Please apply those two, and after you can always um, upgrade when again vCenter releases a patch with the log 4G uh, with the version 2.16. That might take some time. And that might let later later on maybe into any other some other problems or vulnerabilities because you never know with uh, with these small uh, packages at the end it's just it's just too many too many moving parts and it's normal that some of the moving parts sometimes they just got these these problems uh, or these security issues sometimes more mild than others um, not this case this case it has been ten out of ten so. Okay, the patch has finished. As you can see, I did accelerate the process just quite a bit until especially starting the services because it took it took some time to start the services as per usual. Now, the other thing that we need to do is just as well remove log4j class uh, Python script, but it's not here. So you just need to click on here, open it into another tab. And this is another, once again, another KV. And as you can see here, this KV, it does include another attachment. And this attachment, it's that um, specific um, that specific Python script. And in the, this Python script, it will be as simple, once again, as just run it. So let's go and download it. And then after we download it, because I still have the, uh, the, the shell console with the Win SCP, I can just go there and upload this um, upload this Python script, and then I can go into the into my SSH console, and then 
just do exactly uh, let's do clear Python and then the path of this um, of this specific this specific Python script. Okay, so that will be remove log class Python, and then I go clicking yes. And now with these two, for now, as I'm saying, maybe just take a look into the official KVs uh, when you are watching this video, because they might be a third Python script, or they might be a completely different Python script or different method. So hopefully this is as of today, um, 17th of December, 2021, but this might change um, uh, once you have seen the video. So just please, please refer to those two VMware official KVs for, uh, to search for to search for more more information so that it's all good um this will be finishing already um starting the services so once again that's good everything it has been applied the two different python scripts that being were recommends in order to mitigate these problems have been applied uh that's good anything else that i need to do on here well not really all of that were kind of manual steps Okay, so uh, that it should be okay. Now into here, if we click analyze now, I did double check with the guys at Runcast support and they told me that the vulnerability will still appear here because uh, it does not check for the workarounds that we just run themselves. So it that means that if you have patch that the vCenter or vCenters that you have uh, that, that you have run you know all the all those patching and everything you can always ignore this vulnerability or both uh, first put a note on it and then after clicking ignore if you want or just click the, uh, at least add the note and that's it I'll show you how I'll show you how you can add a specific note into this specific vulnerability but first first let's go and disable that automatic uh that automatic logging into the cell itself because it's always better to to leave you know the um kind of that 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 jail or that uh that pre-logging uh cell uh on, on on the on the vcca so let's change this and then instead of this just put appliance as h root and now this is going to log in directly into this um well, yeah, into this uh, different um, different mini, mini cell that uh, the vCenter has. So you can see here under notes. Now, what I'm going to do is just add a note here. So you just click in edit. Uh, okay, let me go here, edit. And then I'm just uh, properly applied the specific patches um, into this into this vCenter. And then you can click ignore later on here. Um, but yeah, so at the moment you can just do it here, uh, clicking save. So as I as I said, uh, this was a combination of two products, uh, Runcast, to, in order to give us that vulnerability and the specific CVEs and the specific links to the VMware KB, and of course the VMware effort in order to fix all of these with those two Python scripts. So uh, let me finish this. Let me finish these notes on here. Click save. And now all of this it's good. Uh, you can click ignore if you want, or if you go under inventory view and you expand your um, well your tree, you will see your vCenter or vCenters, and you can always add the node there. Imagine you have a few of them. You can just go and put the node like okay, I apply I, I apply the patches into this one, but maybe not into this other, and and so on and so forth. So as I, as I've said. Um, Runcast does not check just yet for that uh, for that workaround, but hopefully in the future Runcast will add either that workaround as a fixed, so it checks that uh, the the Java classes had been patched properly, or um, as as lo as soon as you know VMware releases the uh, the, the minor update with this uh, log log for J into the version 2.16, which I don't know when it will be, hopefully soon, but I don't know. Um, then Runcast, I'm pretty sure that it will already automatically check if you are on the newest version, it will automatically check and it will uh, remove that vulnerability from your list. So you will be all fine. So I think that it's all for today. Um, short video, 
with a bit of everything, just discussing what was everything about, discussing how we can fix it, and discussing how we can uh, get the notification, get the monitoring, get the visibility with uh, with the latest version of, of Franca's, which by the way, you can always uh, download for free as a trial for I think 30 days. Um, I just go to the website and, and, and try, the, try the product in the case that you're not, do, not doing it today. I will probably cover other topics around AWS, Azure, and so on on future videos uh, or this, the new operating system for Runcast. But for today, I think that it's all. I just wanted to quickly show you how to remediate the log4j for uh, your vCenters. So hopefully that was useful. And if that's so, uh, yeah, hopefully you like the video. Give thumbs up and see you in future videos. Thanks. Bye.